Hi guys, I'm Bebo from Two Buddies Customs. Thanks again for joining us and in this episode it's all about the WX101 power coating machine and today I'm going to show you how to connect all the relative pipe work that comes with this as the instructions they supply are not very clear. Right, let's get to it. Right guys, as you can see I've already mounted both the gauges. This is the water trap that's supplied with the machine. First thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and upgrade that to something a little bit more efficient as in the past year, I haven't even seen one drop of water being collected. Now it's time to start attaching all the relative pipe work. We're going to start on the left hand side of the water trap with the air inlet. And then we're going to move over to the right hand side. That has two outlets. One's going to go to the actual powder coating machine and the other one's going to go down to the other valve which is a fluidization adjuster. We connect one of the pipes into either the lower or the side, it doesn't make a difference, and then that will go off down to the bottom. That then attaches to the fluidization adjuster. The other end we'll come back to in a minute. Back to the water trap, we connect another hose to the outlet which then goes up to the back of the machine. The other end attaches to the air in. Then we move over to the right hand side and we connect one pipe to the powder. Another one to the air. And lastly one to the rinsing air which connects to the front of the gun and at the same time we can attach the back of the gun and as, as you can see the rinsing air attaches to the base of the gun Next we're going to attach the earth strap. Okay, now we can go ahead and connect the hopper. Right, so let's place the hopper on the stand. Take the right hand pipe, which is the powder, and connect that to the back. Then take the air and connect it to the front. Then take the large pipe and connect to the front of the hopper and the other end goes to the back of the gun, like so. Okay guys, one last pipe to connect on the bottom of the hopper. Like so. And the other end goes to the fluidization adjuster. Now that it's all plumbed in, it's time to turn it on and run through a few of the settings that I've been using. Before we move on to the settings, let me talk about one of the upgrades I mentioned early on, and that's going to be the hopper. Um, this is the new one. It's a fraction of the size. As you can see, the one that comes with it, it's enormous. Uh, you can imagine every time you need to change colors, the amount of powder you need to swap over. This, yeah, albeit a bit small, um, for the home DIY powder coater, this is perfect. Right, let's move on. Now we can turn the machine on. Number one operates with the gun and the trigger. Number two is continuous. I suppose you'll use that if you're in a big industrial automotive business, but for the DIY at home, number one is good enough. We'll come across to the dial. That's our kilovolt setting. So I set mine to 40 for just about everything, but it can go all the way up to 100. But we'll turn that back down to 40 and when I do a second coat I'll drop that down to 20 that seems to be working quite well for myself right let's move over, over onto the air now it's time to set the dials the rinsing air is going to be the first one that I set to 10 psi then we go over to the air again that's also set to 10 psi We'll come back to the powder in a sec, 
is we'll have to go down to the fluidization adjuster first with our hopper filled with powder. Because now we need to get the powder to start fluidizing. So we're going to open the fluidize valve very slowly. Until we, yeah, that's a bit too much, so we back it off until it's just sort of bubbling. There we go. Being careful not to open too much as that will force powder down the pipe. So the first time you open the gun, it's going to throw a whole lot of powder all over your parts. Now that the hop is set, we're going to slowly open the powder button while pulling the trigger until we get our desired amount of powder. If you use these settings as your baseline, you can't go wrong. But you may want to play around with the settings until you find ones that work best for yourself. Well that's about it. I hope this video has been informative. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time.